Okay, it's another night of the insane birds out of a Hitchcock movie. But we're going to do SSH and raspberry pie over here. So hello, Aiden. This is for you. Here is your cluster computer that we'll be sending to you uh, with the master operating system and a slave. Um, I don't know. You'll hopefully have your own HDMI wires. These are mini adapters, HDMI. You can get these little adapters that fit onto a regular HDMI wire. Uh, if I have an extra one, I'll just send you one. Um, this will probably be your hub, and I'll send you this uh, mouse. And we got it wired up here uh, in the master-slave arrangement like last time, only I won't be using this because this is my power supply, so you're you're just going to get these two standalone power supplies, and I'll use the big one. Um, yeah, and so the only other different thing is here, I have uh, both HDMI wires hooked up to both boards, and they actually come to this little switch over here. And this switch will actually take three inputs and one output. I'm going to keep the switch. They're 20 bucks. You can get them at a drugstore. And it just has three inputs, and it goes to one output, goes right up to the TV. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty... A uh, uh, little select button. haven't even pushed... I haven't tried it yet, so hopefully it works. Um, yep, and the keyboard. You'll have a keyboard at your house, so... Um, That'll have you all set up. Now, uh, I got researching things, and look, I did a lot of work the last three days here because I'm trying to get this in the mail to you because I promised you that uh, a long time ago. So, uh, and I got other things to send you too, little knickknacks that I bought here and there. I know you're waiting on the one thing, but um, yeah, so this I did the other day, and hopefully you watch that 20 minute video, and you'll see I don't have a username and password for board number two because I rigged it up as a slave. And then I couldn't get into it because I didn't know how to SSH. Uh, it's a long, long story. But the default Raspbian operating system has username Pi, password Raspberry, and host name Raspberry Pi. I was forgetting the host name. And uh, maybe I have to go in and change that before we even get started today. Now here's some uh, useful commands. LSUSB, that'll list all the USB devices on the network. If config will tell you some IP addresses, you can find your IP address that way. DMSG, DMSG, that's what I always, D messages. DMESG is uh, pretty useful to see when, uh, when it's booting up which USB devices are being recognized and which are being kicked out. It'll kick out some error messages. So uh, if something's not working or if it's not showing up under LSUSB, I go to DMESG. Um, cat proc CPU info. Oh yeah, that's an interesting thing. So I gave you the two boards, the only two I don't have serial numbers for because I haven't done it yet. Maybe I'll put that on our list of things to do today. This is going to be another long video. Sorry, it'll probably be another 20 minute something or other. But, uh, what's my point? I lost my train of thought here. Uh, yeah, cat space proc dash CPU info. And that will give you the, the hardware uh, um, serial number. Now, oh yeah, so here's, here's my, uh, all the boards I had when I was in the, uh, when I was at the hotel. And you see board number 10 and 11, which is the ones I'm giving you. They're two of the only ones I didn't fill out. I forgot to fill out one and number four is confused. I forget what happened. So, um, maybe we'll get you the serial number two. Um, I, I took pictures of all these six pages because that's where I was doing my, my good research there was in the, uh, was in the hotel. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you save those. I can always send them to you again if you need them. So, what are we doing today? Uh, with all that stuff out of the way. So, uh, never mind my shopping list. Gotta have food. So I'd like to use this command passwd for password change. I might use add user or user delete, um, but hopefully there's just a change username. I'd like to just do that instead. So change username, change password, change host names. I think that I'm going to do that first. Check the IP addresses. They should be static IPs, but unfortunately I think they don't, they're not always the same every time you boot them up. Uh, and, I actually didn't take notes before I started the video here on how to fix the static IP and make it stay where you want it to stay. Uh, 
there it's in my notes somewhere from a month ago, but I forgot how to do it now. Uh, which is kind of a bummer because I actually need that for uh, SSH. Now, SSH is how we make the master give commands to the slave. Um, and it's it's a really good program. Uh, it's cryptographically secure. Even though we're not on the internet, we're, so we're an air gap cluster computer. Aiden. So you've heard me talk about air gap before. That just means we're not hooked to the internet. Nobody can hack us without actually physically plugging into our machine. So um, nobody's going to hack us. We want artificial intelligence, strong AI. Nobody really even cares anyway. So there's no benefit to anybody pwning us, uh, pwning the noobs. N- nobody wants to own our machine. But anyway, we're going to use it anyway. And the, we'll try it. Password protected is actually not as safe. Um, a brute force cracking mechanism can eventually break a password. So after we log in trying password, we'll try a few commands that way maybe. Um, I'll show you the method to use keygen. Um, and then you have to copy it. Actually, uh, keygen makes uh, what they call a pair of keys, but it actually one acts like a padlock. So it'd be better to call it a key and a padlock. And it's a cool padlock because you can, once you've generated it, um, it matches the key. You keep the key private. You don't ever send that out anywhere or give it to anybody. And you put the padlock. You can copy that. You can send it out over the internet. You can put it anywhere you want. And your key is the only key that will ever get into it. So when you send people the padlock and they put it on, the other machine puts that padlock on, um, only you can get into it then. Um, so that's what we're going to do with the key gen thing. And uh, so we'll show you and it'll come out RSA encryption. Uh, it'll give you the RSA. So we generate the key pair or the key padlock pair, and then we copy the padlock um, to the slave machine. Um, that should work. Hopefully I know what I'm doing. I probably don't. Um, here we are. We're set up on our thing again, and I just have to plug that in all at once so that these things fire up all at once. Uh, but I didn't think ahead. Um, maybe I don't want both of them plugged in. Uh, maybe I want to start with the slave board just plugged in on its own. Um, I think I can do that. And then I could get the username and password and change the slave board. But you know, I might have to go back and change it to change the software to a master board and a whole bunch of other stuff just to get in and change the username. I hope I don't have to do that. All right. So we're hooked in. So the slave board is now hooked into the USB hub through the controlling wires so it's going to be in charge of the hub and in charge of the mouse and in charge of the uh, keyboard I'm going to go ahead and unplug the power and HDMI from the master board so the master board is not plugged in at all all right everything's plugged into the slave board we got HDMI USB port USB power and uh, the port also has so this is this yellow wire is not hooked at all either I've unplugged that and it's just the keyboard and the and the mouse so I'm gonna go ahead and plug the power in and it should come right up on the screen under HDMI and it should say should start to show a rainbow screen as soon as it starts to boot yep there it is and I'll just press OK with the TV remote because we're using a TV here. Yep, blinking cursor on our screen. Uh, blinking lights down there. I see a little green light. Well, it's on. It blinked once or twice. That means it's thinking and it's doing. I, I have a feeling this is going to boot up and it's not going to let me use the mouse because I have all the software configured to be a slave. Uh, but we'll see if it works. We'll give it a try. Okay, and so while we're waiting, um, I w- meant to tell you, I was confusing in the other uh, video, if you watched it. I know it was 20 minutes long. I started, and then I rambled on, and I got off the subject about file systems. Sometimes file system means directory tree, which I explained pretty good last time, was just those nested folders. Each folder is inside of a folder inside of a folder, okay? And Linux is all about nested folders, Linux and U- Unix. They, they do that a lot. The directory tree structure is very similar to 
the old fashioned computers from the seventies, the big ones with the paper tape or magnetic tape and you know, the ones that took up a whole room, uh, and they weren't really even very smart. Um, so the nested folders, that's an idea that's been around for a long, long time. That's why you're the root user. When you're the root user, well, that's a little, that's different. There's super user and there's root user and there's, you know, administrator privileges and all that. But when you, when you go CD space dash or backslash, that gets you out to the root folder. That's, that's the, there are no folders above the root folder. The root folder holds all the other folders. Um, now the other use of the word file system, when you're, when you don't mean directory tree, when you don't mean nested folders, the other word file system means like a FAT32, FAT16 file system, or a EXT4 is the Linux file system. The FAT systems are, uh, Microsoft systems. And that's when you get, uh, any new memory chip. Well, maybe not RAM, but, um, you know, either flash memory or you get a new hard drive. Um, they come from the factory. There's, uh, there's some factory format formatting on them just a little bit, but they need you to format the drive before you can even put data on it. And the format just, um, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but, uh, it it just, um, uh, you need a file system to keep track of where all the files are. It's not always easy to get to things and erase them or, and, Sometimes you have like a 10 megabyte file and you've only got five megabytes over here and then 10 used megabytes and another five over here. So you need to be able to split that file up. The file system keeps track of where all your files are, which ones have been split into two pieces and where to get the data. When you want it back out of the file system, you need to be good. You need something that keeps track of where every file is sitting physically on the disk. Um, because sometimes you have a file that's a whole file, but it gets split up into a bunch of pieces and put all over in different places on the disk. That's the easiest way of describing it. That's how it was worked in the past. It might be different now because of chip memory, but uh, chip memory also has its uh, flash memory, I should say, also has its weird ways of erasing and writing things on, and I think it splits things up too, and there's error correction codes. It gets real complicated. So having a file system keeps track of everything really well, and and by that file system, I mean... Fat 12, or, uh, fat, I forgot now. Fat 16 and 32. And, uh, there's even an X fat system now. Um, anyway, so I guess we're up, we're booted. Uh, I talked too much. Uh, we're on 12 minutes already on this video. Oh well. Welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. Before you start using it, there's a few things to set up. Yeah, we didn't set this up last time either, and I haven't booted it since. And the mouse does not work because I have it set up as a slave. So in order to get in there and to change the username and password on board two, and maybe even the host name, because the host name default is Raspberry Pi, I might want to change that. Um, I have to actually get into the, I have to pull the, pull the SD card out, plug it into my other computer and change some things around. So what I will do instead is, um, let's put this down and we'll put it on my face again. We'll just shut it off. Oh, I'll have to do a hard reset. Which is just pull it out of the wall, hard reset. And, um, I'm going to just change, show you how to change the username and password on the, on the master board. Okay. And we'll leave the slave unplugged. And then I'll have to make a second video, but that's okay because this one's going long already anyway. Um, cause you don't need to see me get in there and change the username and host name and password of the slave board. Um, you don't need to see that. That's not that important. Um, but once it gets changed, then I'll come back. So after this video, I'll do a second video to show you all the SSH stuff. So here we go. Um, we're going to do one through four on the master board. Then I'll pa I'll stop the video. I'll go change the slave board. And then when I'm done with that, I'll come back and I'll teach you SSH on a second video. So two videos today. Hopefully I get them done. And, and that gives me time to go figure out how to fix the static IP. Uh, cause I want to, I want to make sure. So these are going to have each board is going to have a username, a pass, a new username, a new password new host name and a fixed static IP. And when I get that set up, then we can come play with SSH 
cryptography and uh, stuff like that. All right, so uh, now I'm babbling again. Um, see, I got it rewired here, so it's just the master board. No wires on the slave. And, uh, yeah, and this is not hooked because that's the slave data wire. We just got, and uh, so this braided one is actually input number two. So let's go ahead and plug the power in. That's right. <sighs> Whoops. There we go. Now, okay, all right, it came right up. Raspberry screen, blinking cursor, blinking green light. Well, mostly on green light, but. All right, um, so here's some of my notes here on SSH. We'll get a little bit ahead and study a little. Um, you can use either the IP address or, um, if we were on the internet, you could use a .com. If you were test.server.com, if you knew the uh, server that you wanted to SSH into. So you'd have to like own that server and have it set up ahead of time, I think, to, to use the uh, the .com address. So, you, But we're not on the internet. We're an air gap cluster computer, so that's not important. Here's the third way is you could SSH to username at hostname or IP. So you either put the host name there or the IP, but you need to know your username. Actually, you know what? Maybe I don't have to figure out. See, then I don't have to figure out how to fix the IP if I just use the host name. So if I do use username at host name, but with all of these being the same, when they're, when they, uh, when you flash the OS, they all start out Pi, Raspberry, and Raspberry Pi. Um, I'll, I'm going to want to change all of those so that it's easier to SSH into them. If I want to use username at host name, I want each Pi to have a different username and host name. And this is all going to change a little bit when I get to uh, using uh, PyCore um, because PyCore will have different default usernames, passwords, and host names. And actually, I think PyCore, I think I have to use the IP. I'm not sure uh, about usernames, host names, and passwords. Um, PyCore is a really stripped down version. They don't even really have a desktop unless you put one on. And one of these days I will put one on, but, uh, maybe not today. All right, let's just come down here. The easy way you can do this in command line in the black screen, the CLI command line interface, CLI, but, um, it's probably easier to do it in desktop way. Come down, did you see what I did there? Raspberry Pi configuration. So system, password. Okay, you can change it. Here's the host name. I'm going to go ahead and change this to board one. B-O-A-R-D one. No, no capitals. And, um, I want to enable SSH. And so the easiest way to do that is to go here and click that on. I thought they had a username thing here too. Log in as user pi. No, I do not want to log in as user pi. Didn't I change the user last time? Oh no, I left it pi. I changed the password to master. All right, we'll leave that up for now until I, I'll change the username later somehow. All right, I'm going to press OK. Uh-oh, it froze. Oh, there's reboot needed. The changes you have made require the Raspberry Pi to re be rebooted to take effect. Would you like to reboot now? Yes. And I think we can, uh, we can end the, this video there. Um, I do want to change that username from Pi to something else. Um, and actually really the only way I know how to change the username right now is by add, I'd have to add another user and then delete the one we had. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, there's gotta be a better, uh, a better way to do that. So maybe I'll figure that out. Um, and come back. So, yep, power's, oh, oh no, it's rebooting. Okay, we, we just want to turn the power off. I'll, I'll turn it off after.
So I guess that's the end of our first video uh, on changing usernames and passwords. It's a real hassle to keep track of them, but I think it'll make using SSH much better. And of course, that's what we want to do is use SSH to make the master board tell the slave board what to do. Um, and that's the plan. So I will end this video now and uh, and we'll we'll start up. I'll do a different video in probably a half hour. I'll get ready and I'll get it done. All right. Talk to you later, buddy. See ya.